Hi, um, I'm Zane from MIT, and today I'm going to talk about a new data center system we built called NU, which enable us to interchangeably use data center resources across machines. And this is a joint work with um, Sujin and Adam from MIT, Marcos from VMware Research, and um, Maldi from Brown University. Today's data centers are operating in an efficient way. To use machine resources, users have to provision fixed size cost grain instances, for example, in terms of the uh, number of cores, the size of memory, etc. The figure below here lists some available instance types you can choose when using AWS EC2. The more recent serverless architecture has improved the situation a bit, but it's still fairly cost green and requires users to correctly provision the serverless instance. With this instance provisioning request, the data center operators then beam pack those instances onto the available physical servers to fulfill the resource demand. And in this diagram, we use this uh, black um, rectangle to represent the physical machine and those inner colorful boxes to represent the provision instances. Unfortunately, this long-established paradigm can seriously impact the data center resource efficiency. And nowadays, the resource demand of cloud applications is often variable and hard to predict. And to ensure service level agreement, users always need to over-provision the resource for application's peak usage. In this diagram, as you can see, the application's typical, um, sorry, the application's typical resource usage is often much smaller than the peak usage, causing substantial resources to be underutilized. To unleash these wasted resources, in this work, we ask ourselves a more fundamental question. Is it possible to avoid resource reservation in the data center? In an ideal world, users should be able to freely use data center resources whatever they want without reserving it. This enables us to unleash the unused resource and beam packs more applications into the machine. And therefore, we can keep the machines at a high utilization level. However, to make this bold design work, there is a key problem that remains to be solved. Let's just imagine, later, if the purple application's load increases and requires more resource, what should we do? It is challenging to handle because at this point, there's no idle resource in this machine. One strawman approach is to queue applications to make space. For example, in this case, we can pick this green application as the victim and queue it so that the purple application can get more resource. Unfortunately, this doesn't work as it seriously disrupts the green application's performance. Another alternative is to migrate application away from the overloaded machine to make space. And for example, let's consider a migrating an application that can fit into the right-hand machine. And in this case, that's this green application. However, it can also not work straightforwardly as migration can seriously disrupt the application's performance. For example, it usually takes a few seconds or even a few minutes to migrate a VM, meaning that the, migrated, the performance of the migrated applications um, could be seriously disrupted within that few seconds. This is unacceptable for the latency critical applications which are common in today's data center. This challenge leads to the design goal of our new system new. And in this work, we aim at building a new data center system to enable resource fungibility. That is the ability to interchangeably use resources across machines without performance disruption. Our key idea to achieve fungibility goal is define green decomposition. In new, we decompose applications into granular units, which can be independently scheduled and migrated across machines. Later, Upon resource pressure, NU can rapidly migrate units from the congested server into other available machines. And this brings us two benefits. First, we only need to migrate the right amount of units instead of the entire monolithic application. In this case, we can migrate four small units instead of the entire green application. And we can even have the freedom to migrate units from different applications. For example, we can pick one orange unit 
and three green units. And second, because of the fine granularity, it only takes 100 microseconds to migrate a unit using 100G Ethernet, which is orders of magnitude faster than migrating an entire VM. With this fast migration mechanism, we are able to alleviate the resource pressure with only modest performance impact. Now we've seen how new uses decomposition to solve the performance challenge of migration. However, to make this idea practical, there are more challenges to solve. First, decomposition requires users to write programs with small units, which is unfamiliar to them and can be challenging. And second, decomposing into small units can potentially increase the communication cost, thereby impacting performance. We carefully design you to respond to these challenges. To reduce the program effort, we provide a Unix process-like program model, which enables the user to write programs into a familiar fashion. To tackle the communication cost, we build an efficient locality-aware runtime that optimizes communication based on the locality information of those units. Now let's dive into the design of new. So first of all, it provides a normal programming abstraction called the logical process. It is similar to the standard Unix process, but can span across machines and be executed in a distributed fashion. For example, the figure here shows that the green logical process spans between machine zero and one. A logical process consists of many smaller units called proclets, which are represented using the small boxes here. A proglet is an atomic unit of state and compute. It has its own heap, stack, and threads. Proglets can be independently scheduled and migrated between machines. Proglets communicate with each other through message passing. We disallow direct memory sharing across proglets to avoid expensive fast currency traffic. To efficiently support proglet communication, we build a runtime offers location transparency and optimizes performance. Based on the location of proclets, the runtime will transparently adopt different communication mechanisms. When there is a remote communication, the runtime will use an RPC call, whereas when there is a local communication, the runtime will use a function call instead as a fast pass to avoid expensive RPC overhead. Proclet communication is only possible with a logically centralized controller, which tracks proclet locations and machine resources. Based on this knowledge, the controller answers location resolving requests from runtimes. And meanwhile, runtimes also cache the location results to move the controller off the critic path to optimize performance. Proclet migration is our key design element. Let me use an example to demonstrate it. Let's assume that the left-hand machine is now about to run out of resource. In this case, the runtime quickly detects the pressure and reports it to the controller. The controller knows the available resource situation of all machines. It makes the decision to tell the overloaded server to migrate proclets into the right-hand server. With this, the runtime rapidly migrates proclets, including the memory and threads. Therefore, we can successfully resolve the resource pressure. OK, so this wraps up all the key design elements of our system. And now let me just use a very simple toy example to show you how to write a logical process program with proclets. We adopt an object-oriented program model and treat objects and treat proclets as objects. So first of all, we should have a class definition for the proclet. And in this case, it's a simple accumulator. To make a connection to the design we just discussed, the member variable here will be stored in proclet's heap, and the public method defines the proclet communication interface. With this class definition, we can create a proclet using the make proclet API, and this call returns a proclet smart pointer, which is similar to C++ um, STD shared pointer. It can be passed freely as function arguments, and it supports automatic lifetime management through reference counting. Let's assume the proclet here is remote. 
programmers can invoke Proclass public method using the run API. And the run async here is an asynchronous variant which returns a future. And this is useful for writing efficient asynchronous code. With the run async call, the Proclass spawns a new lightweight user level thread to execute the add method, which is going to increment the counter value by one. Meanwhile, we can make another async call, which also spawns a new user level thread. We can use the get method of the futures to wait for the execution. And in this case, it blocks until previously spawned threads are finished. And after that, the accumulator's counter value will become two. And similarly, we also have a synchronous variant, um, which simply blocks and returns. In this case, we invoke accumulator's get method synchronously, which returns the counter value two. And finally, Proclad also supports computation shaping bypassing a closure as an argument into the run method. This allows us to perform computation near the Proclet data to improve locality. There are more details in the paper, including the logical process of fault tolerance support through replication, the security and threat model of logical process, um, the placement and migration policy for Proclets, and the details of migration and RPC optimizations. Please check our paper if you're interested. To evaluate the logic process, we used 32 machines in a rack, connected using 100 Ethernet. We poured three applications into NU and used them in evaluation. This include the social network microservices from Desktop Bench, a key value store, and Phoenix, a C++ MapReduce framework. And in this talk, we focus on answering two questions. Can NU successfully reconcile the tensions between utilization and performance and how fast can we migrate proclets across machines? First, we conduct an end-to-end -end experiment to find out if we can achieve high utilization without performance disruption. Initially, we first run the social network application across all the 32 machines we have. And then we launch a memory antagonist at one machine to generate intense memory pressure. The antagonist simply allocates memory as quickly as latent permits, generating a memory consumption rate around seven gigabytes per second. And arguably, this would represent the toughest resource pressure you could ever encounter in practice. As the allocation goes, eventually the machine starts to run out of resource. And the runtime quickly detects memory pressure and reactively migrates protocols from the overloaded machine to other machines to make space. In this experiment, we, connect, we compare new with MicroOS, which is the state-of-the-art container live migration system published in ATC21. And for each system, we show two time series figures, where the x-axis here is time in seconds. The top figure shows end-to-end -end performance, um, the end-to-end 99.9% percent have latency in microseconds, and the bottom figure here shows the memory usage. And note here, we also have a dotted line for the 100% memory usage, and using memory above this line would trigger Linux to swap. Initially, we only run the social network application in both systems, and it uses around 93% memory. Unsurprisingly, in both, syst in both systems, um, it's able to achieve low and stable tail latency. At around second four, we start the memory antagonist and it tries to allocate a fixed amount of memory as fast as Linux permits, which is around seven gigabytes per second. As shown in the bottom figure, it quickly hikes up the memory usage into around 100%. As the allocation goes, let's, let's first take a look at the reaction of new. It can rapidly migrate small proclets to make room for the memory attackness. Therefore, as shown in the bottom figure, it can always keep the memory usage under 100% to avoid Linux swapping. And thanks to that, we can always maintain low and stable tail latency as shown in the top figure. Now let's take a look at the micro OS. Since it has to slowly migrate the entire monolithic container, it quickly runs out of memory and starts to swap. As we know that swap is catastrophic to the application performance, especially to the application's tail latency. Thus, in the top figure, we observe a 322x tail latency increase, which seriously violates application's service level agreement. 
To find out how fast we can migrate proclets, we construct a micro benchmark to measure the proclet migration time with different proclet heap sizes. And the y axis here is a migration time measured in microseconds, and the x axis here is a proclet heap size in kilobytes. And note that both x and y axis in log scale. When the heap size is smaller than 256 kilobytes, it only takes as small as 40 microseconds to migrate a proclet into a new machine. And when the heap size is large, we can migrate proclet at 11 gigabytes per second, which basically saturates the line rate of the 100G Ethernet used in our setup. This result demonstrates that MU can migrate significantly faster than any existing mechanism like VM line migration or continuous line migration. There are more evaluation results in the paper. These include the results of other applications, the result that demonstrate that we can quickly react to CPU pressure, um, the result that show we scale linearly with a number of machines, and the results illustrate that we can match or exceed the performance of existing implementations, even in the absence of resource pressure. There are three different lines of related work. First, there are other existing migration systems, including VM, container, and process line migration, and new migrate significantly faster than them. There are also other program models for building distributed applications, including the distributed objects, serverless, MapReduce, and Actor. And compared to them, NU provides a process-like model that is more familiar to the programmers. And finally, there are other alternatives for providing resource fungibility, like resource disaggregation and load balancing. And they can be combined with NU to further improve the resource fungibility. To recap, Resource over-provisioning is a critical issue that impacts the utilization of today's data center. And in this talk, I presented new and its logical process abstraction, which avoids over-provisioning by providing resource fungibility. New achieves resource fungibility with two key ideas, decomposing applications into granular units called proclets, and rapidly migrates granular units across our machines upon resource pressure. Our evaluation results show that New can achieve high utilization without performance disruption. Our code will be available in this GitHub repository soon, and with this, I'm happy to take any questions.